Good morning, church family and Facebook friends. Welcome to our cooking video today, and oh, we are excited. And you'll find out why we're so excited in a few minutes, but we've got some great cooks here uh, that's gonna be presenting their recipes to you, and we're gonna start out, it may be a little bit lengthy today, but stay with us because you're gonna enjoy these recipes. And we're gonna start out first with one of our deacons at the church, and that's one reason we're so excited He's bringing his famous peanut butter pie recipe to us. So Bob Tapley, come on up and get ready to make this peanut butter pie. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, first off, I'm going to put a little disclaimer and a little bit of commercial in this. Uh, there's a dress code. The girls told me there's a dress code, so I had to wait till I was able to afford a new pair of overalls. <laughs> <laughs> and I only could do that because I sold my first wagon load of cotton. <laughs> and I got enough money out of that to get these overalls and my, my wife, Claudia, that, that new $3 dress she wanted. <laughs> so upon that, we'll get, we'll get started with this uh, peanut butter pie. Now, you notice in the recipe you have in front of you, it doesn't mention uh, putting the, the oven on 350. Now, we would do that only if the kitchen was cold and we wanted to warm it up. That's the only reason you need that, that oven on 350. So let's get started. Uh, first off, we got an array of things here you see and, uh, and you got the recipe in front of you. So we're gonna start off by putting the, the cream cheese in our bowl. Let me move some things here so that you can see this. It's cream cheese now. I like to cut it in pieces. Uh, sometimes you can put the whole chunk in there, but you know, you nearly burn the burns out of your out of your mixer trying to stir it up when it's one great, great big chunk. And if there's anything else in there, it'll kick everything out of the bowl. So we'll get started by just cutting this in, in uh, we'll say in about oh, five or six pieces, whatever. And then just put them over in your, into your bowl you See, Bob, it. I've never thought about cutting the cream cheese in chunks like that. Uh, I always throw the whole thing in there, and I guess that's the reason we have to buy so many new mixers. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does. It does put a strain on it. Plus, uh, it, it, having to clean the kitchen up. You know what? I'm glad I put this in my pocket. Now, one other little tip here, and most of the girls probably already know this, but you guys, and maybe is not used to cooking like this is really cooking. If you want to not have a big mess and easy to handle with your peanut butter, get you a cup, two cup, uh, measuring cup, and put a cup of water in it. And then you can take a spoon and you get your peanut butter and put it in there till you have two cups. The water level would be at two cups. And that way it doesn't stick to your to your jar or to your measuring cup. And uh, and then it's exact. You ever try to get a cup of peanut butter and you try to mash it down and get the air bubbles out and all that stuff? I don't know where I'm at here. You know what, it really is not rocket science when it comes to peanut butter. If it's a little more, mm -hmm. it's all that much better. Mm -hmm. Well, I've never prepared it that way, but that's a good, good tip. And, you know, some people use cooking spray, spray it inside their measuring cup, uh -huh. so it'll slide right out. Now, we're getting real close here to being... Being two cups, yes. Yep, right, right at it. So, yes, close enough. All right, now you can just get that out of there. And you'll see that it's, it's a tiny bit wet, but you let it drip off. You know, if I'd have used my spoon, it'd been a lot better. You know, if you're doing this at home, you really aren't talking about it as you go, so you all bear with me. All right. All right, now that's that's in there. Now, the powdered sugar we use, I already pre-measured it, but that's a cup and a half. Now, that's recipe for two pies. I'm gonna put a little bit of the uh, Cool Whip in here so it, it has less bulk when you start mixing it. 
So that's about good to start with right there. Go down here to this mixer. And can you still see? And see you don't have, and there's another thing about the cream cheese, be sure it's room temperature. put the rest of our cool whip in there. I, I like to not beat that so hard and so long because it kind of wants to break it down a little bit. Oh, pardon me for licking my thumb. That's what they make rags for, but that's what they made a tongue for too. Now then, I'm gonna put sugar in it. Watch this walk off the table. By the way, any of you that likes to lick the beaters when you're through with cooking something, unplug it before you do. <laughs> always, it always works better that way. I'm not saying I learned that the hard way. Now, that's a cup and a half of powdered sugar. And that's enough for the two pies, like I said. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of this in there. <coughs> now, I like to use, now any cream cheese will work, but the, but the main brand, Philadelphia, Philadelphia works better and so does Jif peanut butter works better but any of it will work you know when you get it all mixed together it's it sort of camouflages but it is it is tastier how long we got see so you got an hour and a half to do this is that <laughs> maybe not okay I'm, I'm trying to hurry. You're doing fine. You're now, when you get through, I'll tell you this, I get through this. Now, I guess you see what's going on here, what it looks like. I think they'd be afraid to. They are now, for sure. <laughs> All right, you, you see what it looks like now. And just equal it up into two pie crust. Now, that's another thing. I went to, twice I've been to well, Walmart, whatever, to get pie crust. And I like Kieber. Uh -huh. Kieber's got a good taste. They been out. They was out the other day and they was out yesterday. So this is Brand X pie shells. They're still graham crackers. Uh, the reason I said Brand X, I'm not going to advertise for them. Oh, okay. okay. If it was Keebler, I would advertise. You did advertise. But anyway, uh, just try to, and what I do is is try to do it this way. And then I, I got somewhat equal down to the end.
And he has used crunchy peanut butter in the pies, and so you can use the crunchy or you could use the creamy in the gel. Yes. I think that's get looking pretty well equal, and if it's not, well, uh, you can call and complain. The phone number is BR549. <laughs> oh, I just thought I'd add that. <laughs> Because I want total transparency. <laughs> okay. We're going to kind of mash this down. You know what? I guess if if you had a little lazy Susan to spin this around, you could do that, but this works pretty good. Now, if uh, you're making this for the holidays or whatever, if you can make it a couple of hours ahead of time and not just a, at the end of the meal, put this in the fridge and let it just cool up a little bit. It makes it easier to slice it up. And that's what we're gonna do with it. We're gonna put it in the refrigerator and let it be getting yeah. cold while the other two ladies do their uh, cooking video. And we'll be ready to sample it here in a few minutes. Now at the end, at the end, if you want to get fancy, you can do uh, some drizzle. You can put some uh, caramel. You can put some chocolate. You can go around the... Start going... Up. Anyway, I'll show you this. Maybe. You can go around the edge and just make it Make it yes. real pretty like that. Or you can come back and do a little chocolate drizzle. It'll just make it look like something oh, wow. like that. Or you can cut it up after you get ready to serve it and put it on a little plates and then drizzle it or whatever you want to do. So <coughs> at that point, boys and girls, is uh, is the uh, the pies? All right, looks delicious. And, uh, I know Danny, brother Danny. I uh, I'm sure he was telling the, telling me the, the truth, but he said he liked that pie. Yeah, I know several people that like that pie. Okay. So. <laughs> All right. Thank you, and everybody enjoy. Okay. All right. Thank you, Brian. Okay. We need to put the tops on here to put them in the freezer, I guess. Uh, you can just set them out there. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Okay. We're going to get these in the freezer right quick or in the refrigerator, and then we'll have our next. Uh, he's not filming now. Our hey, next lady. Help you with that. Our next lady is going to be. That's my homework. I told you this was going to be a fun day. Our next lady that's going to be doing a demonstration for us is uh, Carolyn Bright, and she uh, she this lady can do everything. I tell you what, but she does make the best peanut brittle you have ever put in your mouth. And so I'm anxious for her to come and try this and show us her recipe because I think all of you maybe have a recipe. And for the ones watching, we'll post a copy of the recipe at the end of the video. So come on, Carolyn, and let's get started with your uh, peanut brittle. Christmas. I hate to follow Bob because uh, I don't have any funny stories to tell, but 
Uh, I'm looking forward to the Christmas holidays and being able to share my peanut brittle, and I share my peanut brittle pretty much most all year long. Uh, the first thing I want to uh, start off with is I, you have to use a microwavable glass bowl and uh, just make sure that uh, it is, you know, safe for, for the microwave. Also, you need a spatula that is heat tempered because this peanut grill gets very, very hot. So you want to make sure that you do that. Now, I start off by adding my corn syrup, which is a half of a cup. And I will share this recipe right here. And I, let me go back just a minute. I always, I, I had always cooked a lot of peanut brittle, but I shared this recipe with a good friend here in the church, um, Jerry and Diane Nickerson. And they taught me that if you spray the, pan, the bowl a little bit with a little oil first, then it's a lot easier cleanup. And so I really have appreciated that. You just add your corn syrup. And I, I will tell you this, if you add your corn syrup first, it's a lot easier to mix. Rather than putting sugar in first or your peanuts in first, it's a lot easier fixed. That's a cup of sugar with an eighth of a teaspoon of salt in it. And then this is an, a cup and a half of, uh, of raw peanuts. Now make sure that your raw peanuts are room temperature because I keep peanuts in the freezer all the time. And if you, if you take them directly out of the freezer and try to cook with them, it will not do nearly as well. You mix this up really well. I'm so used to my microwave at home that I'm not real comfortable with this one. I think it'll do fine. Most of the time, your microwave's a thousand watt, right? Thousand now, let me tell you about the microwave. My microwave at home is a, a thousand watt microwave, and that's what this one is that I'm cooking with. Now, the first cooking I will be doing will be three minutes and 30 seconds. Is it here? Yeah, right there. Okay. 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 While we're waiting three minutes and 30 seconds for her peanut brittle to cook, I'm gonna share something with you right quick. I'm not gonna do a demonstration, but I'm gonna show you what I found. And um, I don't know if any of you have made cake mix cookies or not, but I have been making them right and left here the last few days. And all you do is buy a cake mix of any, really any kind. I like the, I've been using the butter and yesterday I used a red velvet, which was delicious. But all you do is buy your cake mix, dump your cake mix in a bowl, add a half a cup of oil and two eggs and stir that up. And I add a little, maybe a teaspoon of vanilla and just stir it up. And it's gonna be real stiff. And so I like to use this to scoop them out so you will, so they'll all be uniform in size. And uh, so I made, it, uh, one cake mix will make 24, 24 cookies. And so I made these last night just for, to show you the different types you can make. This is a, a chocolate chip pecan. This is just a plain, vanilla, uh, plain yellow with uh, some sprinkles on it. And this is the uh, plain uh, uh, butter with a Hershey Kiss in it. And then this is similar to the uh, Snickerdoodles that I, I rolled them in, I rolled the little balls in a cinnamon sugar mixture and then put them on my tray and cooked them. And then whenever they got through, I sprinkled the cinnamon and sugar on them again. And so this would be something really neat to do with your kids. Uh, especially small kids because you know there's only four ingredient 
ingredients, your uh, cake mix and your uh, eggs and your oil and your vanilla. And, and you can use chocolate cake mix, yellow cake mix, just any kind of cake mix you want to use. But anyway, I wanted to share that with you because we've been making these for the Wednesday night kids and they seem to really be liking them. And uh, it's, a, it's just a neat little recipe to have. And then another one I have, uh-oh, I lost my, I want to hit my cookbook up here. Uh, this is my, um, my mother's no-bake uh, fruitcake. And I had, the, I had the recipe, but I don't know what I did with it. So, but all it is is um, just graham cracker crumbs and your fruit and Eagle Brand milk mixed up. And uh, then your, thank you, Marty. Yeah, it's one pound of graham cracker crumbs, one can of Eagle Brand milk, 20 marshmallows. I was about to forget that. And two cups of nuts, half a cup of dates or raisins, half a cup of cherries, half a cup of pineapple, and that's candied pineapple, and a cup of coconut. And you just mix all that up, put it on your wax paper, and roll it up. I roll it in rolls, and then slice it. And it'll keep in your refrigerator for like uh, two to three weeks. But we'll have a copy of that recipe also. And so I think Carolyn's almost finished here, and so we're going to let her get started back with her uh, peanut brittle. I'm going to remove this from the microwave and I'm gonna stir it really well. Now, the thing about stirring this is you wanna make sure that you stir it in a hurry because it continues to cook if you leave it out for very long. Now, it's gonna go back in the microwave for three uh, minutes and 30 seconds more. Okay. Okay, does Bob, do you have something you can share with us for three minutes? For three minutes? <laughs> 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 I'll, share, I'll share a story or okay. two. Okay, let me tell 350 for nine minutes. Oh, do okay. not overcook them because if you overcook them, they'll look almost like they're not done but if you overcook them, they will be hard as a rock. So nine minutes on the cookies at 350. Okay, Carolyn. I will tell you a little story about my peanut brittle. In the church I came from, uh, we had a social, our Sunday school class had a social once a month, and we all brought covered dishes. Well, I was expected to bring a jar of peanut brittle. And my husband and I had been traveling, and we got home the day of the social. Well, I didn't have time to make the peanut brittle, or I didn't want to. I was probably too tired, and I went to the social anyway. Well, I got there, and the guys, these guys about like Bob, and he said, they said, where's your peanut brittle? And I said, I didn't have time to make it. And they said, well, why did you come? <laughs> you can see how important a woman's cooking is. You know, men think with their tummies. They don't think with their brain. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, and um, that's just one of the uh, stories that I think about. Another one is I will share this with you. I want you to look at the pan that I will be dumping my peanut brittle out in. I bought this new pan uh, right before my husband passed away and it was a non-stick. Well, he didn't think that it needed spraying since it was a non-stick. So I dumped my peanut brittle out and he started trying to get it to slide and it wouldn't slide. And so he proceeded to get a metal spatula and he started digging. Well, you can see what happened to my new pan. And <clears throat> I was getting all out of, been out of shape about it. And he said, don't worry about it. Don't, it'll be fine. I'll just spray, you know, the next one. So. Anyway, I said, well, I'll just go buy another pan. Well, now I can't do that because every time I make peanut brittle, I think of my sweet, sweet man. Yes. And it just brings back some good memories. Um, How long have you been making this peanut brittle? I've probably been, I don't know, probably 15 or 20 years. I don't know. It's, been a, it's just been a recipe in my family for a long time. 
but I like to use it for gifts. Now at Christmas, I like to give uh, like a, a little tin of, of peanut brittle, but those little tins get kind of expensive sometimes. You know, some of them are four or five dollars. <clears throat> so I wait until they're on sale after Christmas for 75% off. And I go and buy a bunch of them and stick them in the cabinet and then I have them ready to go when I get ready and to use them. For everyone that's here today, she made peanut brittle for you to take home with you in the little bags. And so everyone gets a bag of peanut brittle to take home. So don't forget your peanut brittle. Okay, now it is time to add the butter and the vanilla. That's two, table, uh, two teaspoons of butter and a teaspoon of vanilla and you stir it really well. And it should be kind of a golden color. And, and stir it until the butter melts. And then you put it back into the microwave for two more minutes. And then it's gonna be done. you a sack <laughs> and you can take it home Bob. I told Bob I said if I'd have known he's gonna wear his overalls I would have worn mine because I have some too you know I'm a farmer too so I could have come prepared to to compete with him as far as looks and um, I might could have even driven my tractor up here now I didn't sell any cotton to buy them with or, or sell any butter or eggs but at least I could have worn my overalls there wouldn't have been any competition about the looks. <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn, tell them, Carolyn, tell them where to get the bulk peanuts at the best Okay, place. I buy my peanuts from a place in Mineola. It's called the Nut House. And, you know, it kind of fits me pretty good. But <laughs> anyway, it's a neat, neat place. And I buy like, I'll buy 10 to 15 to 20 pounds at a time and I keep them in my freezer. And when I get ready and need them, then I just measure out into some bowls. And, cause I always make at least two batches when I make them. It's just easy. I have, uh, I think three of these glass bowls that I use like this, but uh, it's always, it's just always uh, good to have it handy because when you live in Yantas, Texas, yes. you can't buy peanuts you know, here, so it's good to have that. I assume if you take them out of the freezer, you have to let them thaw. Out. Yes, they have to thaw, and they have to be room temperature. We're almost through. Now this is what it's going to look like, and I'm going to add a teaspoon of soda. It's golden brown, and I'm going to add a teaspoon of soda and it's gonna look real frothy. And you're gonna mix it really well. And my pan, like I say, has been sprayed with uh, a cooking oil. And I use olive oil cooking oil. I think I like it better than, than uh, just the regular oil. Now this is the secret I think, because a lot of peanut brittle is thick. Now this is the secret here, is I shake it and thin it out so that it gets uh, very, very thin. And this was the job that my husband always did for me. And it was, uh, it was just sweet memories that we got, you know, we cooked together like that. But you can see how it thins out mm -hmm. and it begins to cool. And when it cools, then I put it out on to a, um, I put it at home, I put it out on my countertop. I have a uh, granite countertop and I just put it out on my countertop. But here I'm going to put it out on a, um, 
um, non-stick pan. And it takes a little bit of time for it to cool, but it doesn't take too long. Now he used to do this, and I'd say, you're gonna flop that out on you one of these days, and I'm gonna be peeling peanut brittle off of you. <laughs> But he kept, he, he just would fan it in, in the wind like this to cool it. And then after it cools, and it doesn't take too long after I get it out of the pan for it to cool, um, then you just break it up in pieces and you always store it in an airtight container mm -hmm. because if moisture gets to it, it'll be sticky. But just always put it in like a Ziploc bag or a airtight uh, container somehow or another. Now, this is the way I test it to see if it's beginning to cool. I pick up the edge and I can tell it's not. It's not cool enough yet to, to um, take out of the pan. But you can see how thin it gets. Now, there's a lot of recipes and people like the thick peanut brittle. And I, I've never made any of it because this is just our favorite but I think a lot of it has to do with the amount of soda that you put in it. And I only put a teaspoon of soda in this. So, um, now just uh, uh, at home, watch your microwave, because if it's a stronger wattage, then just cut back on the number of minutes that you cook. If it's not as strong, then add a few minutes or seconds to your cooking. But your, the cooking, uh, right before you put in the uh, vanilla and the butter, it should be a little bit golden, but even, and if you like it a little bit more done than this, some people like it a little bit with a little bit more of a scorch taste, mm -hmm. but this is kind of the, the look that we like. And it's just about ready to come out. Does this need to be sprayed this pan? Do we not spray it? No, it'll no. be all right. I think there'll be enough oil on the back of this okay. to do that. Like I say at home, I just uh, put it on. The I just make side. sure my counter's clean. I, I I was telling a friend of mine this week I probably have the cleanest counters in town because I I make so much peanut brittle that I have to clean my counters a lot. Oh wow. And that's it. So it's ready now to And it's chill. ready to cool, mm -hmm. and then it won't take very long for it to cool, and then break it up in small pieces, and you're ready to go. Okay. And I thank you all, and have a Merry Christmas. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank you so much. salad that's super duper easy to make and you can freeze it you can serve it you can freeze it and when you get ready to serve it just let it thaw a little bit it's kind of slushy and it it's just a family favorite so it's just dumping cans it's highly technical <laughs> that's how I cook so we have a can of peach pie filling first of all And we just dump that in a bowl. Then you take pineapple. It calls for, the recipe calls for pineapple tidbits. They're kind of hard to find sometimes. And if I can't find them, I just get chunks and I just cut them, cut them up in little smaller pieces. And it calls for a can of pineapple tidbits. So we're gonna put those in there and drain the pineapple. Then it calls two cans of mandarin oranges, drain the juice off of those. So we're gonna put those in. Got those. And then it calls for two 10 ounce uh, it calls for boxes, but I don't know if they even make them in the boxes anymore. So I had uh, I had the containers. These are larger containers of strawberries. So to get 
the 10 ounces I've got one in a one and a half so I usually put a little more strawberries just because our family likes it that way but dump that in there stir that all up And then it calls for a half a cup of chopped pecans. Just dump those in there. Stir that. And then coconut flavoring, imitation coconut flavoring, a teaspoon of coconut. And this is optional um, if you don't like the rum flavoring. You don't have to use it and use it very sparingly. I put a, just a slim eighth of a teaspoon. Uh, the original recipe calls for two tablespoons of brandy. I don't keep that. I might be, I might be forced to drink that, so I don't keep that. <laughs> Cook, cooking has that effect on me, so putting an eighth of a teaspoon and stir that up real good and then basically that's all there is to it you if you like bananas you can chop bananas up in in here and put bananas in it as well um, and it just makes a just a, a pretty a pretty variety of fruits in there and stick it in the freezer freeze it and then when you get ready just a little bit before you get ready to serve it take it out thaw it out and as slushier the okay. better and Miss Pat has a finished product here's the finished product I'm going to turn it up a little bit where you can see it it's got a little squirt of cool whip on it can't turn it too far can't because, turn it. but maybe there, you go. there we go and this is Marty Smith we didn't get to <laughs> introduce her but she has been on the cooking shop video several times and so uh, you'll probably be seeing a lot of Marty because she's an excellent cook and We've already had her carrot cake, and everybody here knows about her carrot cake. It's delicious. So uh, we appreciate her coming. We appreciate Bob being here today, and we appreciate Carolyn, and we appreciate all the live audience. That just gives yeah. us an extra boost when we've got you, uh, when we've got a live audience here with us. But uh, now I'm going to ask her again. Say a couple of words, and I promise he won't be long because I only have about five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was not for you. That was for me. Don't take long. <laughs> this is our pastor, Danny Parker. Hey, I just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, and I'm glad that mostly we have a live audience. There's a few dead ones out there, but we're okay with that. All right. Merry Christmas to everybody, and. We trust that uh, as you look forward to Christmas, this be an exciting time for you. What greater thing could we do than to celebrate the birth of our Savior who came and gave up everything so that he would come and come and live and die for us? Wow, what an amazing thing that is. And I'll just say, if you don't know Jesus as Savior, now would be a great time of year to trust him, to know him not just as the baby in the manger, but also as God on the cross, the God-man who died for us. So we, we're just really thrilled about the season. And if you be sure and be in church this year, uh, you know, and in fact, we're having a special service on Christmas Eve, and it's going to be great. It won't be full of a bunch of me talking. It'll mostly be scripture reading and singing, and, and we'll uh, do Lord's Supper, and we'll do uh, uh, candlelight service at the same time. So it'll really be a special, worshipful time on Christmas Eve. So, hey, we love y'all. We would encourage you to be out in church this Sunday. And if you don't have a church, come visit with us. And my five minutes are over. I'm done. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Again, thanks to all of, you, all of you for being here today. And we wish you a very Merry Christmas. And Stay tuned for January because we've got some exciting things happening in January. So we're going to be looking forward to being back with you sometime in January. Merry Christmas.